Hello. In this tutorial for Code.org's AppLab environment, you are going to learn how to take data from a text box and store it in a variable. We are going to do this in text mode. However, if you want to learn how to do it in block mode, check out the link in the video description or click on the video link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So we're going to start by going to design mode and we're going to add a text box. So text input. I'm going to make it a little wider so we have more room. And then I'm going to name it. So it's a text input box. So we're going to start off with TXT. And then I'm going to call it name because we're going to take in a name from there. Now we need to tell the user what data goes in here. And there's two ways to do that. We could put a label up there that tells them. In this case, I'm going to use a placeholder. So what a placeholder is, is it's text that goes in there until we click on it and then it goes away. So the placeholder will say your name. Now we're going to make a second one. So I'm going to drag another text input box, line it up there, and I'm going to drag it over so it's the same size. And we'll call this one TXT age, because it's a text box that holds age. And again, we could use a label to let the user know what data goes in there, but I'm going to use a placeholder and I'm going to say your age. Finally, we need a button. So when we click the button, it'll run some code that'll take the data out of those two text boxes. So I'm going to grab a button. And then I'm going to change the ID to BTN because it's a button. And we'll say get info because it'll get info from those text boxes. And then the text on the button is going to say get information. Let's make this a little bigger. So the ID, this is how we refer to it in code, and the text, this is what the user sees. Now let's go and take a look at the code. So we'll click the code tab here, and we can see there's no code so far. I'm going to hit enter a couple times just to make a little room at the top. We need to create an event listener that's going to listen for a button click, and when the buttons click, it's going to run some code. Now we could type it out here if we wanted, but there's an easier way. So we're going to go back to design, and we're going to click on the button. Then we're going to go to events, and then under click, it says triggered when the button is clicked with a mouse or tapped on the screen. We're going to say insert and show code. So what it did is it created an event listener here for us. So when BTN get info, which is the name of this, is clicked, it's going to run this anonymous function here that it created for us. And it'll do whatever code is inside this anonymous function. So this anonymous function starts here at the opening squiggly bracket and then closes here at the ending squiggly bracket. And there's only one line of code here that says console.log, you know, btn get info clicked. And that would just, you know, if we clicked on it, it would just print out this in the console. Now I'm going to delete this because we don't need that. So we want to do a couple of things. We want to get whatever text is in here and then whatever number is in here. So we need to start by creating a variable to hold that information. So I'm going to say var, which creates a variable, and we want to name it name because it's going to hold the name. Now this is what's called a local variable because we declared it, and when we say var and give the name of the variable we're declaring, we did that inside of a function. And that means a few things. First of all, it means that when we run the function, it is created, and when the function ends, it's destroyed. If we run the function again, it creates the variable all over again. It also means that this variable is only accessible inside this particular function. So if we have other functions, whether they're anonymous functions with no names like this one, or if they're functions with names, we can't access this variable itself. So if we need a piece of data that will be created when the program starts and will be accessible in any functions, we'd want to create a global variable. And we would do that by declaring it outside of any function. So like we could put it up here and we could say var, you know, in whatever name, and that would become a global variable. But we only need this piece of data inside this function, so we're just going to do a local variable. Now, we have to use the single equal sign. So the single equal sign is the assignment operator, which means we're going to take whatever's on the right side of this expression, and there's nothing right now, and then put it in to the variable on the left side. Now we want to take out whatever data is in the text box here. So we know this is going to be text because a name will be text. So we're going to use the command get text. 
then open close parentheses. Now, we got to tell it where are we getting the text from. And we highlight this over here, and we see the ID of this text box is txt name. So then in quotation marks, we say txt name. And then finally, we end the line with a semicolon. So when this function runs, it's going to create a local variable called name, and it's going to get the text from the text box called txt name, and then put whatever data was in there into this variable. Now next, we have to do something similar with this one for age. So we're going to say var age, and you know, the assignment operator, single equals. Now in this case, we're going to be getting a number out. So we actually could use get text if we wanted to, but then it's going to treat any number as a piece of text, which, which limits us. If a number is stored as a piece of text, that means we can't do certain mathematical operations on it. It means we can't do certain mathematical comparisons on it. So if we know for sure it's going to be a number, we want to make sure we retrieve it and store it as a number. And in that case, we're going to say get number. And then the parentheses again. Then inside the parentheses, the name of this is txt age. So in quotation marks, it's important that they be in quotation marks because it's, it's the name of this. So we're going to say txt age. And then we're going to end it with a semicolon. So you can see there's a couple of warning uh, triangles here. Let's see what it says. It says name is defined, but it's not called in your program. And that's okay because we've created name and we've given it a value, but we haven't used it yet. So this is just warning us, hey, you haven't used it, but we know we haven't used it yet. Now, we want to make sure we are actually storing the data we think we are. So to test it out, we're going to uh, output it to the console. So I'm going to say console.log and then parentheses. I'm going to say name. And then I'm going to end with a semicolon. Now you see here, I didn't use the quotation marks. If I put quotation marks around name, it would literally print out the word name. And that's not what I want. I want it to print out the, what, the variable name. So this is going to print out the data inside the variable name. And then I'm going to do the same thing with age, console.log, and I'm going to say age and end with a semicolon. So now, again, it's going to print out to the console down here whatever data is in the variable age. So let's run this and see if it works. So I'm going to put a name here, and I'm just going to pick a random name, John Smith, and I'm going to put a random age here, 23, and I'm going to say get information. So it should take John Smith out of that text box and put it in name, and should take 23 out of txt age and put it in that variable, and then print out what's in the variable name and age. So let's see, get information, and there we go, John Smith, 23. And we can do anything we want with this data. This was just an example. And even if you're going to do something more complex with it, it's often a good idea to try out the console.log to make sure the data you want is actually in the variables. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and then leave me a comment down below. To see the next video, click on the image on the left side of the screen. To see the entire playlist for the series, click on the image on the right side of the screen. And to keep up to date on all the latest content, hit the subscribe button in the middle.